Hi everybody, welcome. I'm Eric from Wheels to Wonder and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about planning your own bicycle tour. I'm going to break it down into 10 different segments so it's easy to follow. First up is motivation. What do you need to get motivated to start your own big bicycle tour? What was really important for me was that I wanted to see the world on my own terms. Not to read it in a book, not to see it on a television screen, but really experience it for myself. So it's a totally different frame. That's something I would like to give you, that the growth that is there is for you to take when you're out there, when you're in the real world. It's also a very healthy way of doing some exercise. You're sitting there day in, day out, wind in your hair, and it's just a real, real nice way to enjoy yourself, to get yourself from A to B, to test yourself, kind of your mental stamina, kind of your physical stamina, and just to grow that way, to get a good sense of who you are as, as a person and what your capabilities are. That way you can really connect on a deeper level with yourself and the world around you. Number two, planning and navigation. What I think is really important is that the tour you're going to make, that this is going to be your own tour. On the internet, you can see a lot of different tourists that are cycling in the most extreme and the most wonderful places for long periods of time. And don't take that as a guideline. Maybe you never rid a bicycle before in your life. Maybe you camped never before in your life. Then shouldn't hold you back and let it discourage you from making the tour you want to go. Maybe it's a week, maybe it's a month, maybe it's two years or longer, that doesn't matter. What matters is, is that this is going to be your own tour, how big or small it may be. One of the big guidelines for us was the seasons. The seasons really dictated our itinerary. For example, in the winter, we wanted to be in a place where it was warm. So we could still cycle leisurely, relax by the side of the road and take it easy. So that was really important for us. Maybe for you it's different. Maybe you like to cycle when the weather is more challenging. So then for you, you could take the seasons and form your itinerary around that. So where to go? Well, I thought always was a really romantic idea that you could start at your own doorstep, cycle around the world, and then cycle back to your own house. But also, if you are super interested in to see like a more exotic place for say like, like Africa, then taking a flight somewhere could just be an excellent way of making your dreams come true. So there is no set way uh, where you should go and how you should do it. That also depends really on your own dreams and your own ideas. What should I see when I'm out there? I think a good mix of nature and culture is the most ideal sandwich in which you can grow as your own person. Challenge yourself within nature, enjoy nature, all the beauties it has to give, but also on the other side, you have culture, uh, the beautiful cultural things like food and architecture and people getting together and having a good time in their own special cultural way for say uh, a wedding or festivals. I believe to get the most out of a bicycle tour is that a combination of these things together gives you a complete oversight of what the world outside has to offer. Another thing that's quite important is insurance. For us, insurance was mandatory. We were planning to go to pretty remote places, not all the time, but sometimes. And in these remote places, we would be really vulnerable. If something would happen there, infrastructure would be bad. The hospitals there uh, wouldn't be uh, up to standard uh, that we, we wanted them to be. So good insurance, to get an evacuation out for us was super important. Visas are also one of these things you will come across on your bicycle travels. Nowadays, a lot of countries have e-visas, but still you need to get them. This is a thing you need to educate yourself about. So go on the websites from the countries you're going to visit, see if there is a visa needed, and if so, just apply for the e-visa 
like maybe two weeks in time before you get there. You can pay online. They will mostly send you a PDF. Not all visas go by e-visa. That maybe you have to go to a certain embassy with your passport. Could take several days. So take your time when you're going to the city to get your visa sorted out. Maybe you have to hand over your passports and you will be without them a couple of days. So check that out. There's a lot of information online and I think it's not that difficult, but inform yourself well. So something about navigation, should I use maps or should I use a smartphone? I don't think there's a wrong way to go about it. Maps are the old school way and I think they can be really fun. It's more challenging for sure than going with a smartphone app on your telephone. But at the other hand, I think it's super convenient to navigate with your telephone. You can make layers on the internet or with dedicated programs. You can download it into your telephone, put it as an underlayer over the map. And this way you can really uh, easily find your way back to the main route you plan to take and you can diverge just so easily to one point to this city or uh, to that waterfall. It's just super convenient that way and that is really difficult for a map to replicate. Maybe both could also be like a very very interesting combination. Maybe you're a little bit more adventurous and you say let me go ahead and try to travel with a map and then have the smartphone navigation as a backup. Number three, budget. So what I think you need to realize is what kind of person you are on a trip like this. Are you the person who likes or who wants to rough it? Or are you a person who really loves to go a little bit more luxurious, uh, for say like glamping or staying in accommodation all the time? Or maybe you're someone in the middle like we are. So one of the important things to us was to estimate our daily expense. We looked online how other people did it and kind of guesstimate for us that was 25 euros per person per day. And we break that down in a couple of different segments. So one is food and drinks. The other part is accommodation, not all the time, but sometimes. And another part is saving up for visas, maybe a flight or a ferry. And another thing is unforeseen costs, like maybe something is broken, something on the bike, something with the cameras. Unforeseen costs, they can always happen. So we factor that in, in our daily estimate. So when you have worked out your daily expense, then you could say like, I want to go out into the world for two years. So that's two times 365 days and that times your daily estimate and that is your total sum you need to save up for your trip. Number four, camping versus accommodation. For us, wild camping is one of the joys of going on a bicycle tour, so we wouldn't miss it for anything. Being out in nature, enjoying the elements, seeing birds, the trees, with nobody around, have a wander around, maybe pick a few berries to eat. On the other hand, it also saves a lot of money. So for us, it was a way just to prolong our tour as well. Accommodation also has a lot of merits. So once in a while, we go to a hotel to relax, to get ourselves washed, wash our clothing, and of course, edit these videos. For us, the combination of wild camping and accommodation, it just combining the best of both worlds for the ultimate experience. And of course in this there's no right or wrong way. If you want to go wild camping all the time because you really love to do that or maybe you're on a tight budget, of course this is your tour. You need to do it your way. Maybe you have a bigger budget, you don't like camping at all and you want to stay in hotels, of course that's great too. Just being out there and experiencing the world on your bicycle, that's what it's all about. Another great way could be going couch surfing or taking warm showers. Going to warm shower hosts. These can be ways that you can also find some accommodation and also get into a little bit more cultural exchange with the people there. Number five, dangers and safety. 
We feel that traffic is the number one danger when out on a bicycle tour. Even if you go camping into wilderness areas, you sooner or later have to go on a somewhat main road and there's gonna be traffic. If it's gonna be cars or maybe even bigger trucks, these things can be really dangerous when you're not taking care. A good way to go about it is to stand out with fluorescent clothing perhaps or defensive riding. Wild animals can also be a problem, or even domestic animals like sheepdog. For instance, in Greece or in Turkey, there are a lot of dogs protecting the land of their owners, and these dogs can be highly fierce. We had some nasty encounters with these dogs, and it's really something you want to think about before you go on a tour like this. Also, cycling through big cities can pose a lot of problems. There's a lot of people there, there's mostly a lot of traffic there. Things can go wrong quite easily. There's also a bigger potential for crime in bigger cities, so please be aware of that as well. Of course, the remoteness of the wilderness areas where you're in can really pose a problem when you yourself have a problem. Things can escalate if you have an accident and the nearby medical services are a long way off. That's something you really need to think about. How do I go about tackling those kind of problems when I'm in a remote area? What about people? Mostly people look out after you. I have to say that in our encounters, the people are very friendly, they're helpful. There are only a handful of rotten apples out there that really can make your life uncomfortable. Also other scenarios can pose problems like weather. Maybe there's intense sun and not enough water. Maybe there's a lot of rain, no shelter. Maybe it's freezing out. These are really the things you have to think about when going on a bike tour is that you prepare for the elements. Maybe you have heard of five times speed. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So that's maybe a good idea to think about a problem in that way so you can tackle whatever comes your way. But don't let it stop you. This is going to be a journey of a lifetime. So go with the flow you encounter and get the most out of it. Number six, hygiene and health. Your body will adjust. What do I mean by that? You're going to cycle a long day. You're going to camp. You're going to be in positions you're normally not at when you are at home. So your body will adjust. You're gonna feel stiff first. You're gonna feel sore, but over time things will adjust and then probably you're gonna feel even better than you ever did before. Washing is one of these important things to keep a sense of cleanliness and healthiness. So washing your clothes doesn't have to be every day only your underwear and your t-shirts, these are really good to keep clean, perhaps every other day, just to keep a feeling of health and cleanliness about you. Pooping is maybe one of the things you never really thought about doing in the wild. So a good thing is to have a little kit ready with some toilet paper, some matches or a lighter to burn your toilet paper after use. Dig a cat hole when you find a good area. There you do your things, you burn the toilet paper, you clean up afterwards, wash your hands with a little bit of disinfectant stuff, and then you're good to go. Cuts and scratches also do happen, as do headaches and maybe some stomach problems. So a good thing is to prepare a little first aid kit for all the things you might encounter out on the road. So last word of advice here is be opportunistic with the chances you get. Maybe you come across a toilet building with running water. It could be an excellent place just to wash your clothes, wash yourself and stock up on water, for example. It's always a good thing to have enough for when you really need it. Number seven, food and drinks. Water is always king. You're drinking so much water when you're out and about that the thing you need to take most care about is your water supply. So a good purification system is actually a good thing to think about. 
we always have three ways of purifying our water. One is a filter, the second one is we can cook our water, and the third one, when the situation arises that we can easily cook or maybe our purifying filter is broken, we have some little tablets that we can use to purify our water. Cooking yourself is a great way to look after your own health. You can buy the ingredients you want, like a lot of vegetables and a lot of fruits. Also, cooking yourself is of course very interesting to keep the budget small for your expenses for food and stretch the money that you have and put it into a longer journey. But on the other hand, buying food can be a great cultural experience and that's also just a great way to get a better sense of what's going on in an area like that. What ingredients do they use? How do they cook it? Just a good tip while cycling the whole day is that you're gonna burn a lot of energy and sometimes you have these moments of sudden lack of energy. You can become hangry, hungry, angry, and especially when you're with a partner, these things can give a lot of friction. So we always have some snacks ready so we can avoid that state of mind. Depending on where you are in the world and what you can get, taking supplements can also be something you would like to do, especially when you're in a place where healthy food is not that easy to get. So you can supplement your diet with some vitamins and some minerals, things you need to keep your body strong, to keep your mind clear and to keep on going. Whenever you go anywhere, please do one thing and that's leave no trace. So do your duty, take your trust with you and throw it away at the appropriate place. So one of the highlights is getting invited for food and drinks. It's just an incredible situation you find yourself in with some local people drinking some tea, having some bread. One of the more incredible things we have experienced on this trip was when we were invited by people to come over and have something to eat or something to drink. It's almost hard to put into words how heartwarming just the hospitality of people opening up their home to you, be a part of their world for a little while. It's just incredible. Number eight, the bicycle. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting on this one, so let's get into it. What is a good touring bike? I think the two things that a touring bike really needs to excel in are comfort and durability. Comfort, because you're sitting on the bike day in, day out, and you don't want to get specific sores. Your hand position has to be good. Also, the saddle and the pedals you place your feet on, these points of contact, pay extra attention on them. So the other important thing is durability. You don't want to be fixing your bike all the time, making repairs to tires or the drivetrain. So this is a thing to focus on when you choose your touring bike. Does the budget matter? Of course it can help. A bigger budget means that you can get a more specialized bicycle for certain terrain. It could be even more durable with the high-end parts. But on the other hand, it also doesn't matter that much because a lot of bicycles, almost any bicycle, can become a touring bicycle with some TLC, some ingenuity. I have a good example, I will put it down in the description, is from Tom Allen. He made a bike he called Charlie, the scrapyard bike. I think he made it for less than 30 pounds. Check it out, it's a great article. And actually this story was one of the inspirations for me to build my own bicycle. Should you go for a bicycle touring setup with panniers or should you go for a bikepacking setup with frame bags and a more mountain bike kind of experience? Of course, that depends on what you want for your trip. We bicycle toured with panniers. We can take a lot of stuff with us, but also we were quite heavy. So we are now trying to lighten our load. So we are looking for a hybrid setup. So what you want to do depends on your own style. So I assembled my own bike before our big bike tour. And I have to say that was one of the most wonderful projects I ever did. It was really interesting to get to know the bike up close, to get to know the parts, how they work, how you adjust everything. And also the sense of 
being able to prepare to troubleshoot it when you're out and about, that's just a great piece of knowledge that you have about your own bicycle and also helps to repair somebody else's bicycle if you happen to meet somebody in need. So grow as you go would be my advice for your own bicycle. You can buy a super high-end bike and maybe you don't like it after a month and then you have spent all this money. So better buy a reasonable, affordable bike for you and then when you are ready, change some parts on it or even further down the road, get that specialist high-end bike because you know you really like this way of traveling and it will provide you a better vehicle to get out into the places you want to explore. Number nine, the gear that you need. What I think is one of the most important things is to protect your body's core temperature. If it gets above a certain number or below a certain number, you are in real danger of hyper or hypothermia. So you have to mitigate that with the right clothing. I'm thinking about a good insulating layer, a good rain layer, some good base layers. These are the things that can really help you to stay safe. Should I go for lightweight gear or should I go for more heavy durable gear? I think both have their merits. What we try to find for ourselves is like a good in-between things that are durable but also lightweight enough so we don't get bogged down. Another pointer here is that a lot of lightweight equipment is quite expensive. You don't have to go all out and buy the most new and the most technical lightweight stuff just from the get-go. The tent is also a very important piece of equipment. It's your house if you choose it to be. So a freestanding tent is really convenient because you never know where you're gonna end up. Do you have some soft ground? Maybe you are on a granite slab somewhere or even on somebody's wooden deck. Freestanding tent is really convenient. You can put it up everywhere super easily and you don't have to stake it out per se. Last tip I want to give here is that less is more. We thought we would have tremendous amounts of time while out on the road to do all kinds of cool hobbies, uh, but then in the end, we were cycling and we were filming and we were camping and that's super enjoyable for us. So we didn't came around to all the other things and we sent stuff back home. So perhaps that's something for you to think about as well. Number 10, documenting your journey. Of course, for us, documenting the journey is one of the most interesting things we do during our travels. For us, it's even somehow the way why we're on the travels because we love to document it through video and through photos that we make. Should you be documenting your journey? Of course, that depends. Maybe you are the type of person who likes to take a point and shoot camera or no camera at all and just be in the moment and not have all these pieces of equipment that need charging and you, have, you need a laptop for video editing. These things are quite cumbersome and not ideal when out on a trip. Or maybe you're a person like us that wants to get better as a photographer, as a videographer, and you want to tell stories, to give inspiration to other people, and to have a document for yourself when you're older. And of course, that's great. And I urge you to go for that if you feel that's the way you like to go. So I think documenting your journey is a great way to help you remember your own journey. And if you're planning to share it, and that's just a great way of giving somebody else some inspiration for them to go on their bicycle journey. So we have come to the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If I missed anything, please leave it down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. If you would like to like, subscribe and hit the bell, that would help us and the channel out a lot. So thank you for that. Up here, I'm going to put some extra videos for you guys to watch. And then we've come to the end. Only thing left for me to say is have a nice day and I will see you guys in the next video.